Hello and welcome to another MyTunes podcast right here at manxradio.com. Mark Tiley, the nation station, Manx Radio. I have before me a local democracy reporter. What is one of those, you may ask? Well, here to tell us what one is, is one. Emma Draper, local democracy reporter. Welcome to my tunes. Hi, thank you for having me. Well, it's lovely to have you here. So you work at Manx Radio, but you're not sort of all Manx Radio. You're sort of part BBC. You're part this... I'm confused. Explain <laughs> to me, what is a local democracy reporter? So a local democracy reporter is a reporter um, who covers all the local authorities in their area. So um, I'm one of 165 and there's loads across England, Scotland, Wales and some in Northern Ireland. And um, I cover Douglas Council and then all the other local authorities on the island. And um, it's a scheme that's funded by the BBC, but all the local democracy reporters are placed at a local radio station, like I'm based here, or they're based at a local newspaper or um, like community publisher or something along those lines. Oh, so some will be with newspapers, not just radio and telly? Absolutely, yeah. OK, so how did you get the job? Well, I applied for it. <laughs> Even I got that bit. So so you saw it advertised or what? Um, so I applied for the a newsreader job and they said, hmm, not quite sure about that one, but have our local democracy reporter job instead. And I took it and I'm now doing it. I've been doing it for a year now and it's so much fun. All the people that you meet on at meetings or just doing stories are amazing. So what sort of stories are you covering? Well, it's mostly local authority stories, so um, obviously stuff like social housing, or I think I did one recently about some changing huts in Ramsey. Um, I've just done one today, actually, at the Henry Bloom Library because they had a children's laureate speaker come to talk to some kids from a local primary school and about all the good things that libraries do. Um, we've got all sorts of stories that I cover. Now, your work, I hear it on Manx Radio, but I'm assuming it also goes to the BBC. It absolutely does. So the, my stories go on to what they like to call a news wire, and then that um, is accessed by the BBC, so BBC Downstairs and BBC Isle of Man, and all the other local news outlets on the island too. And if they're really desperate, they can pick it up from BBC like National. So too. you're pooling your work. So, I mean, uh, 3FM and Energy, they can use it absolutely as well? Absolutely, they yeah? can, yeah. And do they? They do, yes. I've seen my stories. I've seen my name a few times on their on their Facebook pages and websites, so they do use it, yeah. Well, this is good. This is good. This is joined up journalism, joined up world. Absolutely is. Musically, I've got a list here. She, uh, Emma went through a few. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mmm. Mm. Ooh, okay. Loving the tunes. Everybody in the newsroom, all your colleagues said there'll be ABBA. Well, that, there is later. There, there is, later. is, yes. <laughs> and I, I will talk to you about ABBA a little later on. But let's start with today's choice. Where are we going for the first track? I do believe that my first choice is Reach by S Club 7. And I love this song so much. I think it's it's such a happy, upbeat, joyful song. You know, you put it on in the morning and it just makes you feel like I can do today. Whatever bad is happening, like it's okay. Like I can get through it. And um, me and my friends, I think it was maybe like a week or two before we graduated from university. There's a local karaoke bar um, where in the city that I was at university at. And we did it for karaoke and it it's just one of the best memories I have from uni. It's so fun and it's great. I'm thinking that S Club 7, when they actually came out, you'd have been very, very young. Yes. <laughs> I would have been really, really young. Really? Even, even the sequels. But it still works for you? Absolutely. Right, let's play it. Here it is, S Club 7 and Reach.
iTunes guest all this week is Emma Draper. She is a local democracy reporter, one of many across the whole of the British Isles. And if you missed yesterday, she's not going to go through it all again. You'll have to tune into the podcast at the end of the week because she'll explain it all again there. Well, she already has done, if you see what I mean. But one thing I picked up on yesterday, Emma Draper, was the love of karaoke. Now, you're a bit of a karaoke queen, aren't you? I mean, that mm, that's debatable. <laughs> I do like a bit of karaoke, but um, not all the time. You have to pace yourself with karaoke because oh, yeah. otherwise you might, you know, you might get bored of it. If you do something too much, sometimes you get bored of it. But I do love a bit of karaoke. It's so much fun. And do you play any instrument? No, actually, no. I do. I play the triangle. I play the triangle. Not well, professionally, you know. Just you know, it was just my chosen instrument when I was at school. You know, yeah. when it was on the when it was on the tray of of musical instruments. You know, you had the maracas and the bongos and the tambourines and the the clicky. Um, oh, I can't remember castanets. The castanets. Yeah, the no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going for the silver triangle. Do you and, know, just a little uh, thing. You know, yeah. love it. Well, you know, it's a it's a fine art. Absolutely, it is. I mean, it may not play a lot, but when it plays, you know, you can hear it. Yep, and you know, you just know that somebody's taken so much time, skill, effort to get into that playing that triangle. Well, you know. You're a fine, fine lot of triangle players out there. Born and raised in the Isle of Man. So, uh, Union Mills? Yes, I live in Braddon, yeah. Uh, so, where did you go to school? At uh, Kiwi 2. Ah, and what, what, did nobody say, come on, Emma, let's get you playing the piano. Come on, Emma, let's get you off that triangle onto something else. Were you not drawn into a musical scene? No, I grew up with a very sporty family. Ah. So, my passions lay outside of the world of music i'm afraid but i did get involved in some school plays and so i dabbled with a bit of drama and acting which is just so much fun it's always fun to you know pretend to be other people and other characters and explore things through like plays and drama and art it's so much fun now when did you get an idea in your head that journalism or writing was going to be something for you to do Oh, I think it was quite late on, actually. Um, when I was in year 10, we were sent to do work experience for two weeks. And I think it must have been a school scheme. I, from what I can remember, it was a little while ago now. And I got sent for two weeks um, to go to the newspapers. And I really enjoyed it. It was great fun writing stories, it, talking to people, um, you know, all that kinds of stuff. And I thought, I actually think I'd quite like to do this. So I, you know, I figured I'd write down a little list or I had a really long list of things I wanted to do and it was TV presenter, actor, sports, you know, all sorts of things. And I wrote journalist on that list and that's where I ended up now. So I, I carried on and I did a little bit more work experience in lots of different places and I ended up doing my degree in journalism. In Portsmouth, which is a location I know very well because I did my training down in Chichester. Which no is, way! Yes, which is only up the road from Portsmouth. So we're going to talk about South Coast tomorrow. But I want to talk a little bit today about Taylor Swift, not just because you've chosen a beautiful track by her for track two, but also because this woman is a force of nature. She is, and she's definitely one of my role models. I think she's so she's so talented and she's so smart and she's very clever and her songwriting and the lyrics that she creates they are they are just so impressive and incredible and i feel like every time you listen to a song you it, i'm just like wow like it's amazing it's so impressive it's so amazing you're right it's not just the performing skills which are fantastic mm -hmm. but it is her writing and mm -hmm. it is her overall very very intelligent person mm -hmm. she i think could end up as president of the United States <laughs> because of yes. her popularity. She's incredibly popular. Yeah. It's incredible. Like, I mean, obviously, I'm a fan of hers. And, like, just, like, the sheer amount of people that I've seen on social media who've gone to her um, gone to her tour and her era's tour is just, like, it's incredible. She's selling out stadiums all across the US. And I didn't get tickets for her UK um, legs, which I was a bit sad about. But it's okay. Like, it's not the end of the world. I think somebody did down there. I think somebody in the newsroom. They room. did. Who is it? It's Siobhan. I thought yes. so. Yeah, she's going to see it in Manchester, I think. I think it's Manchester, yeah. Yes. <sighs> Taylor Swift it is. Um, oh, <laughs> I can see why we've been drawn to this track. I really like this one. I mean, it does help that it's got my name in it. And um, I think it's always nice when like your song ends up in a name. I think it's really fun. And it's always like, oh, it's got my name in it. That's so cool. Um, so that's why I picked this one. Here it is. When Emma Falls in Love. When Emma falls in love, she paces the floor, closes the blinds and locks the door.
When Emma falls in love, she calls up her mom. Jokes about the ways that this one could go wrong. She waits and takes her time, 'cause little Miss Sunshine always thinks it's gonna rain. When Emma falls in love, I know that boy will never be the same. She's the kind of girl that you can't put down. Like if Cleopatra grew up in a small town, and all the bad boys would be good boys if they only had a chance to love her. And to tell you the truth, sometimes I wish I was. Before Emma came into the studio and says, "You want to talk about ABBA?" Well, she's already mentioned ABBA. Has Emma Draper, local democracy reporter, because you're an ABBA fan, big time, aren't you? I love ABBA. ABBA, they are, oh, they're just they're so oh, I can't, I can't describe how much I love ABBA. It's they're just amazing, and just the songs are so catchy and so timeless and so iconic, and I love it so much. Would you mind if I mentioned your age? Go for it. Okay, twenty-two. ABBA had long finished their main run of success before you were born. How come these songs work for a twenty-two-year-old right now in twenty twenty-three? I have no idea, <laughs> but they just do. They just do. Like I just, I don't know what it is about them that makes it so timeless. And I resonate with so many of their songs because they are just so good. My mum introduced me to them because she is such a big fan of ABBA, and I think her. My, like my grandma her mum was a big fan of ABBA and then it just have it on in the car and I was just like oh these are really good songs I love it and I kind of just grew up listening to them because it's what my mum was playing in the car and now I'm older I'm just like oh I can just appreciate it so much more 
I think the big show and the movies must have helped a lot when the, mm. the Mamma Mia phenomenon that w went right around the world. Mm. And also now, of course, they've got this Avatar show in London, permanent show. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. But I'm going to try and book some tickets to go and see it with one of my friends. I've not seen it either. I'm, I'm going. I'm going. Yes. I don't know <laughs> at some point, I'm going to go. I'll go at some point. Everybody who's seen it tells me you cannot believe they're not there. Really? You simply are taken into this world where ABBA are on stage because the band is there. You've got a 10-piece live band in the orchestra pit or whatever on stage. And there they are. ABBA are there. And by the time they start, you just cannot believe it's not them. It must be so clever. I, do you know what? That's made me want to go even more now. No. Like, just it's like, yeah, oh, I just want to go. Because <laughs> one of your um, one of your colleagues, uh, Lewis Foster, yes. he went. <gasps> did he? He's been. Did he not tell you that? I don't think so. No, he has been, and he was completely blown away. Completely blown away by it, and just said, "You've got to go." Yeah. I think even people who are only casually interested in mm -hmm. ABBA find it yeah outstanding yeah. right this is the hardest thing then ABBA's song catalog is enormous it's so many brilliant songs how could you pick just this one do you know what it did take me such a long time to figure out I was you know I was going through my like the ABBA gold album and I was going through and I was like that one's so good that one's so good that one's so good they're all so good and I love listening to them all but I just feel like this one in particular doesn't get played as much as I think it could I think sometimes it's overshadowed by the big ones you know Waterloo and um, Dancing Queen and even like Gimme 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 and Voulez Vu I think this one is just overshadowed a bit too much and I think it needs a bit of appreciation and a little bit of love Good idea. And it is... Honey, honey. Emma Draper, ABBA mega fan, local democracy reporter. I've said a couple of times, if you want the full description of what a local democracy reporter is and does, you'll have to get hold of the podcast, which will be out at five past 12 today, because that's when we do that. Uh, but for now, we're going to talk about 
Emma and the future. Because as we established, I rather rudely asked how old you were, um, at the age of 22, the world is your lobster. It's all out there. The future is not written. Where's it going to go for Emma Draper? Ah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Where would you like it to go? Oh, well, do you know what? I have wanted to travel quite a lot recently. I've, there's a lot of some of my uni friends have gone on a gap year. So I'm like, ooh. I could go on a little gap year or I could stay I don't know that I've got a lot of I've got a big long bucket list of things I want to see and I want to do so I'm going to have to start ticking them off at some point I mean career wise you, you've got your foot in the door here mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of people because as we mentioned not just Max Radio very much the BBC any other agency that really wants to take your local democracy reporting work so where might you end up? Oh, I don't know. I feel like I could end up anywhere. I could, you know, I could do whatever I wanted to do. That's that's what I've decided to start telling myself anyway, so that I could do anything I wanted to. Brilliant attitude. I, right? That's what I thought to myself. Well, we did mention that you went down to the South Coast. You went to Portsmouth Uni, mm -hmm. and I said I was at Chichester a, a little while before you. Uh, did you enjoy the South Coast of England? I did. It was amazing. I Honestly, I tell people all the time, you know, I went for the weather and... I did. I did go for the weather because it's so gorgeous down there. We had a beach, like a 15 minute walk away from the flat that I was renting with my housemates. When we had the heat wave, we were down there like almost every day in the sea, just, you know, beach barbecues, be like just fish and chips on the beach all the time. I just, I miss it so much. Obviously the weather is a little bit similar to here because you're on a coast. So you get the mist and the fog and the rain and the wind and all of that. But the summers were just, oh, they were just so nice. And, and there's, so a, there's a lot of young people in one place down there. And oh, it's, yes. It's a busy, busy uni. Yeah. It's definitely a uni city, yeah. which just made it even like, even more like amazing and even more special. Now, going back to this future gazing with me, indulge me a minute. In terms of the subject matter you've had to cover so far in your role has there been an area a particular sort of story you think i'd like to do more of those i'd like to do more of because obviously you get to do everything and some of it's quite routine but some bits won't be is there certain elements that are getting you gripped more than others mark that's a really hard question <laughs> it's my job to ask I know. The tough questions. <laughs> do you know what i don't think there is one particular bit that stood out because the role is so varied it's hard to find that one bit that i'm like that's the bit but i've really enjoyed just like meeting people and interviewing people and like talking to them about you know what's going on in their area or all the things that you know they come out of local authority meetings that people may have missed or skipped out on that turn out to be really really important to people that's the bit i i really like doing is finding things that you know i think oh that might not be too important but actually when you read into it and i'm like people really need to know this and that's the bit i really enjoy i think like reflecting on it having spoken out loud about it i think that's the bit i really enjoy is finding things that are going to mean the most to people and will be so important for people to know about and, you know, seeing it, you know, effect, have its effect in real life. You see, that is what makes a good local democracy reporter. The conduit who gets that information from there and gives it to us. Emma, thank you. Oh, thank you for right. that. You know, I, one of the great joys of doing this is not just meeting people and talking, but also looking at the music choices. I did not see this one coming up. Tell me why Carly Simon has suddenly popped up onto the horizon. So I love a little bit of mystery. And my favourite thing about this song is that like nobody knows who it's about. It's just my favourite thing about the song and it's so catchy and it, it's such an iconic song. I always think it's so fun to guess like, ooh, I wonder who it's about. And there's not, I think... If I'm right, I should have I should I should have searched this before I came on. But I think there's only four people in the world who know all the people that the song is about, mm. and one of them is Taylor Swift. We have come <laughs> full circle. Yeah, Emma Draper, keep doing what you're doing. I will. Don't you worry, Mark. Keep being that conduit for us all from these. Uh, I will do my best. Local democracy reporter. The full explanation in the podcast. Don't forget, it comes out at five past twelve. But for now, Emma, thank you. Thank you for having me. You're so vain, not you. Carly Simon and some mystery men. It's been great. Emma, thank you. Thank you so much.
Carly Simon, you're so vain. The final choice of my MyTunes guest this week, who has been our local democracy reporter, Emma Draper. Don't forget, keep coming back here to the podcasts at Max Radio. There's new ones popping up every single day. And don't forget to join me, Mark Tiley, for a fabulous morning extravaganza, 9.30 to 12, Monday to Friday. I thank you.